Hi everyone! So today I'm going to do a slightly different video, and this video is going to be on a maths and logic problem. So sometimes there are math problems that are really, really hard to solve. So perhaps we want to estimate how many alien civilizations there are in the universe. Now we're pointing our telescopes and our satellite dishes, everything, upwards to the sky, and we're trying to find signs of life or alien communications, but we're not finding any at the moment. But perhaps we want to try and have a rough estimate of how many alien civilizations there are. Well, how would you go about this? Well, it's really hard just to estimate at the top of your head. You can use simple logic and break the problem down to individual components. So for example, in this example, we can break it down to how many stars are there in the universe, how many planets around each star on average, and how many of these planets actually have alien life. And we follow through this calculation, we can get a rough estimate of this final value. And the way of solving this was first invented by Enrico Fermi, and this is called a Fermi problem when it's done like this, when you break apart a problem into individual components. Okay, so let's look at a really simple example of a Fermi problem. Now this is one of the more famous ones. And the problem goes, how many piano tuners are there in Chicago? So a piano tuner is someone that tunes the piano so that all the notes sound right, not just a musically talented fish. So let's say that you're a piano tuner and you're thinking of moving to Chicago, but you want to see if there's enough business for you there. So you want to work out if there are already too many piano tuners in Chicago or if there's not enough that you think could sort of fulfill the demand of people wanting to tune their pianos. So what you want to do is you want to get a rough estimate of how many piano tuners are needed in Chicago and if this is more than there are in reality then you pack up your bags and you go live in Chicago and you can tune pianos in Chicago for the rest of your life. And this is a really simple Fermi problem and it's a really really simple one to work your way through. So we want to see how many piano tuners there can be in Chicago so they all have enough work. So the first thing we want to do is try and estimate how many pianos there are in Chicago. Now, to do this, we first start off with the population of Chicago, which is around 10 million. Now, this is the only value in the equation that we can actually accurately find out. We can just look online, you can find the value of the population in Chicago. It's around 9.5, 10 million. We can use this in our equation. And now, as I said, this is the only value that we actually know the answer for, but the rest of them we're just going to be estimating what the fractions or what the values are. So next we want to work out how many houses there are in Chicago. This is just because pianos typically come with households, not with people. So normally a house has a piano, but it's unlikely that each person in a house is going to have a piano. So what we want to do is work out on average how many people live in a house in Chicago. Now there are a lot of different options. You can have a single person living in a house, you can have a couple or friends, you can have a family or a group of friends which are more than two people. But on average, it probably comes around to around two to three people per house, but let's just take two as the average. So we're saying on average, that in each house in Chicago, there are around two people living in it. So next we want to have an estimate for the fraction of houses in Chicago that have a piano. So this is kind of hard to estimate and guess, but what you could possibly do is work out how many of your friends have a piano in their house, and you could use this as the fraction, or you can just take a rough estimate. So I'm going to say that around one in 20 houses has a piano in it, and I use this value in our equation. So we know that there are around 10 million people in Chicago, and that roughly two people live in each house. So this makes around 5 million houses in Chicago. Now what we want to do is we want to divide this by 20, or multiply it by a fraction 1 over 20. So that's 1 in 20 houses has a piano. So 5 million times 1 divided by 20, and you get 250,000. So this is an estimate for how many pianos there are in Chicago. So next we need to estimate how many piano tuners would be needed in the Chicago area to keep all the pianos tuned. So first we need to think, how often does a piano need to be tuned? Now I'm actually no expert in pianos or piano tuning, but I'm going to say that to keep your piano sounding pretty nice, maybe you need to tune it once per year. Next we need to estimate how many pianos can a piano tuner tune in a year. So let's say that they work 250 days per year. So that means they don't work weekends and they take a couple of weeks off for holiday. Now, let's also say they work 9 to 5, which is 8 hours a day, and perhaps a piano takes 2 hours to tune. So that means that in 8 hours, and 2 hours to tune a piano, they can tune 4 pianos per day. And they work 250 days per year. So we multiply 250 days by 4 pianos per day, and we find that a piano tuner can, av can on average tune 1,000 pianos per year. So we now know there are around 250,000 pianos in Chicago, 
and a piano tuner can tune 1,000 pianos per year. So what we need to do is divide the number of pianos by the number of pianos that can be tuned per year, and we'll get the total number of piano tuners that could be needed in Chicago. So we do 250,000 divided by 1,000, and we get 250. So this is 250 piano tuners would be needed in Chicago to keep all the pianos tuned and sounding pretty awesome. So if you're a piano tuner and you're thinking of moving to the Chicago area, first things first, just check out how many piano tuners there already are. If there are less than 250, then there's probably enough demand for you, but if there are more than 250, then it seems the market's probably saturated, so it's probably not worth going to. But in this example, we can actually find value of how many piano tunes there are in Chicago. So from different websites, you can find that in around 2009, there are about 290 piano tuners. So from our estimates, and they are only estimates, so you have to take it with a bit of a pinch of salt, it seems that the market's probably oversaturated. There are 290 piano tuners, but we estimate there's probably a demand for about 250. So we've gone through a nice simple example, but how do we know the method works? I mean, how do we know the estimate we get out at the end is reasonable? Well, what we've done is we've split the problem into smaller ones. And what we've done is we've got estimates for individual components of the formula. Now, some of these individual parts we're gonna overestimate. So perhaps we overestimated the number of people that live in a house in Chicago, and perhaps we underestimated the population. But what's gonna happen is that these overestimates and underestimates are gonna to tend to cancel each other out. Now, they're not always gonna perfectly cancel each other out, but they'll tend to make it a lot better than, the, than what it is just by estimating it on its own. So this is how it works. By splitting up, the errors from each of the individual estimates tend to cancel each other out, so you get an improved value out at the end. And there are lots of really other great examples of things you can do. So I said before that you can try and work out how many alien civilizations there are. This is already a famous equation called the Drake equation, and it uses these different values to estimate how many alien civilizations might be in the universe. The Fermi himself was actually there during one of the atomic bomb tests. And by dropping some paper from where he was, he saw how far they were blown back by the explosion. From this, he managed to estimate the power of the nuclear explosion within a factor of two. So doing this simple method can really get accurate estimates of different values. It's really, really good in a simple and interactive way for solving some very difficult mathematical problems. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any feedback, questions, or other ideas for videos, leave them in the comments, I always try and reply. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at UcashedUp. But otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.